Hi, my name is Michalina Makhnio, and for the purpose of today's presentation, I would like to talk about barriers and challenges people in recovery face while trying to obtain an employment. Early stages in recovery usually focus on establishing independence, gaining self-esteem, gaining self-confidence, um, which is really necessary as people try to navigate through day-to-day -day activities in life. Recovery is not just about getting sober. It's more about building and enjoying meaningful life while being sober. Uh, talking about a desirable outcome in addiction treatment, um, success is usually measured in uh, people being able to obtain and maintain employment. Um, finding meaningful employment these days is very difficult for anyone. Uh, people in recovery face special barriers and the roadblocks that were placed in front of them while they are trying to recover. And some of those I will cover in this presentation. So for the purpose of uh, this topic, I divided those barriers and roadblocks in external and internal barriers. Some of the external barriers include things like having a criminal background, like having a big gap in the history of employment, um, such as lack of education, uh, lack of trade, homelessness and poverty is, is a big one, as well as worries related with self-disclosure, what people can disclose on their application for employment or maybe during the interview. And some of the internal barriers I would like to talk more about would be worries and anxieties related to how can I manage full-time employment with my recovery, uh, maybe lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, uh, fear of losing benefits is the big one, as well as um, being able to manage both recovery from uh, addiction and recovery from any coexisting mental health conditions. I would like to now explain a little bit more, maybe expand on those external and internal barriers. First external barrier I mentioned was having criminal record. Uh, many employers base their decision on the result of um, criminal background check. As we can see in this chart that I provided, nearly all employers check cr criminal record and more than half of the employers check for the history of arrest even if those arrests did not result in convictions. Um, having history of such convictions as possession, possession with intent to sell, DUI, larceny, among others, um, reduces chances of getting a call back for the interview by 50%. And this number is even lower when we uh, take under consideration the race. African Americans and Latinos have almost no chance of getting that call back. Another roadblock people in recovery face is having big gaps in the history of their employment. Uh, very often they are not able to produce any letters of uh, recommendations or reference. Uh, many people struggling with addiction um, and substance use disorder have poor history of employment, uh, which might be twofold. On one hand, they are people that uh, don't work for many years because of their addictive lifestyle. On the other hand, they are people that take many odd jobs and they are being paid under the table. Therefore, they can't produce really any letters of references. Many people get discouraged um, and frustrated uh, while looking for a job because they don't know how to tackle resume, resume writing uh, process and they don't know how to prepare for interview. There is really lack of uh, resources uh, when it comes to helping people prepare for interview writing um, resume and um, really connecting them maybe to potential employers. 
very often I'm asked questions by my client, uh, clients, how do I explain those gaps of um, employment when I go for the interview? And I always tell them, highlight your skills. Uh, talk about what you know and what you can do rather than talk about what you cannot do. Always be honest and be prepared. Another big one is worries and anxieties um, about revealing any personal information, especially pertaining to addiction, making any self-disclosure. That is also related with discrimination in the workplace, as well as stigma associated with labeled addict or person in recovery. Despite many positive um, affirmative actions related to changing a view uh, of addiction in our society, I think it's, it is still viewed largely as um, willpower weakness, simply don't do it, um, just say no, those comes to mind. And many people in recovery worry about that self-disclosure. Am I going to lose a job if I disclose <clears throat> that I'm in recovery? Am I going to lose a promotion when I disclose that I have to attend meetings in the night? Am I going to be compensated the same way or being passed for any promotions? Um, I think it's important for people in recovery to know their rights and um, knowing that they are laws that protect them um, against discrimination. The bottom line is that employees, employers are not allowed to ask for anything related to past substance abuse. They are not allowed to ask um, about any circumstances um, of uh, possible substance abuse or substance dependence. It's important to know that recovering addicts make very good employees. According to some researchers, um, research suggests that they are highly motivated to work because employment grants them uh, all kinds of opportunity, especially opportunity to establish independence, um, get their life back. They are very loyal and committed to employer and they are less likely to call sick. So um, many people in recovery are also practicing total sobriety, so they are, they are less likely to party after work, uh, to skip work, uh, partying on weekends, um, they don't do binge drinking, so they are very good employees. It's important to remember that. Another big roadblock for people in recovery is that very often they lack trade or education. Many people in recovery um, face challenges due to previ previous failure to complete their even basic schooling. Um, in today's society, when we really focus on being an expert and having an experience, many people in recovery find themselves isolated, lost, and very pessimistic about the future of, of their recovery and the future of uh, their employment. Very often I hear statements such as, why don't they go to school? Um, the schools are all around, they can learn the trade, they, they can obtain, graduate something. Um, but let's think about it. Many people in recovery don't have a good credit, so they can't obtain financial aid to go to school. And very often I see them being hopeless and helpless when it comes to continuous education. And the last one of external barriers and roadblocks I would like to talk about is very important homelessness and poverty. Um, I remember working in an outpatient program and uh, many of my clients would come to groups straight from the streets or from the shelter um, environment. Very difficult to um, create meaningful life and obtain meaningful employment when somebody lives on the streets. Um, looking at um, Maslow hierarchy of uh, values and needs, um, let's take a look at the bottom one. The basic one, it's really human need to have um, 
water, food, warmth, and rest. Those are the basic needs. How can we expect people finding and maintaining employment when they don't have food, when they are hungry, when they don't have safe living environment? Let's talk a little bit now about some of those internal barriers that I mentioned. Um, the first one was anxieties and worries related to uh, being able to manage full-time employment and their recovery. Um, many people in early recovery utilize 12-step uh, fellowships um, and those fellowships, fellowships encourage people to obtain so-called uh, get well job. That means usually um, is the low pay job, hopefully low stress job and usually part-time job. Um, people are encouraged to uh, fit their, their lives and their jobs into their recovery, not recovery into their lives and the, their jobs. Therefore, very often they, uh, they worry about how am I going to be able to manage all the meetings and working with my sponsor and doing all those recovery oriented activities with having full time job and all that stress. And I think it's important here to mention um, the necessity of building sober support network so they can have those people, supportive people in their life that can help them dealing with difficult emotions, both positive and negative, and any stress that will come with the employment. Another huge um, fear is fear of losing current um, insurance, current health benefits. Um, that is the, the very realistic fear because many people in recovery are on some kind of medication re regimen, whether for co-occurring disorders or any other medical issues. And losing health benefits and insurance would mean that they would go um, uninsured or underinsured and they wouldn't be able to pay for their medications or any services, therapeutic services, pharmacological, pharmacological services. And um, what is on the other side of it, unfortunately, is a possibility of relapse. And that is a risk that we as a society have to face, not providing insurance to people in recovery. And the last barrier I would like to talk about a little bit is uh, having coexisting mental health issues and any psychiatric symptoms. One of the most important uh, roadblocks preventing people from obtaining and maintaining employment is having any psychiatric symptoms such as anxieties, panic attacks, maybe depressive uh, moods, depressive episodes. It's very difficult for people to wake up and go to work, maintain certain level of productivity and at work. And I think it's very important for people in recovery to be able to recognize their need for any mental health services and treatment for their co-occurring disorders. Towards the end of my presentation, I would like to talk a little bit about real benefits of employment for people in recovery. Um, what are those benefits? Uh, when people are, are employed, that increases the amount of um, available income for them. Therefore, they can manage their symptoms better. Um, they can obtain independent living. They build their self-confidence, gaining self-esteem. And employment decreases things like homelessness, uh, dependence on the public system, maybe the amount of hospitalizations people um, would normally obtain. Uh, the, there is a decrease in stigma associated with addiction as well as amount of relapses. So employment is uh, really, really important for people in recovery. I would like to also talk a little bit about available resources for people in recovery. 
we have the Department of Labor's One Stop Career Center, we have America in Recovery, we have the National Higher Network, and we have a ROSE program, which is Recovery Oriented Employment Services. Zoraya Pedraza, who is responsible for the ROSE program, does a wonderful job um, locally for people in recovery, providing all available services such as resume writing, connecting them to um, employers who hire people in recovery, provides them with local uh, job training, um, job first information and any uh, other information they need. I hope this presentation was informative and helpful for those of you that might find yourself working in addiction services and let's remember together we can make a difference.